guys and welcome back to Belle's Books. Today we are going to be reviewing and rating every single one of the books that I had to read for my undergraduate degree in English Literature. I studied English at the University of York and I finished last year and I am now doing a master's. This is the video for you if you're thinking of studying English Literature um, at university or if you want to study English at the University of York even to get you an idea of what the course might look like, where it might take you. As we go into this video, do keep in mind that all of my ratings are arbitrary. They are mine and I'm rating fantastic books um, completely according to my own whims, interests and preferences. To kind of show you how you can love a course and love your degree and still not love every single book that you read and really find the ones that you do love and use the ones that you love to find um, the area of literature that you are passionate about and that you want to continue studying, continue reading and later specialise in. So yeah, I read a lot of books for my undergraduate degree and I hated some of them and some of them I really loved and fueled my passion for the subject and got me excited enough to do a master's in medieval literature. We're going to go through them in order of when I would have been reading them, like when I was assigned them approximately. So I will not be going through any of the secondary reading I did, any of the criticism, any of the theory, because that would be a whole other topic and frankly probably pretty boring. So we're just going to stick to the fun stuff and go through the fictional books. So the very first module I did in my degree was A World of Literature 1, Classics and Cultural Translations. And I really enjoyed some weeks of this course and absolutely hated other weeks. Um, so the first book we read was Antigone by Sophocles, which was the original ancient Greek text. I had already studied this before and I would rate it three stars. It was fine. It was solid. And then we read jean Anouilh's Antigone, which is kind of a modern adaptation of the same play from the 20th century during, I think, World War II. And I liked that slightly more than the original, so I'll give that a four stars. The next book we read was The Odyssey by Homer. I really couldn't get into this. It was one of the things that I kind of expected that I would absolutely love, um, but found myself not very interested in. So I'll give that a two or three stars let's go with two james joyce's ulysses zero stars hated that i found it really difficult to get through that i didn't like analyzing it over its metamorphoses i really enjoyed that i would give that four stars i found it a really interesting read and i enjoyed it much more than homer's the odyssey by the way if i didn't say it before all of these works I've been reading them in translation. I was not reading the original ancient Greek or Latin texts. Um, so then we read William Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream. I don't really care for Shakespeare. He just doesn't do it for me. So I'm gonna go with one star. Then we read Virgil's Aeneid. I think we just read part of it. Um, so I'm not sure if I can give it a solid rating, but I kind of just remember it being average. So three stars. Dante's Inferno, zero stars, hated that. If anybody wants a free giant copy, I've got one downstairs. The next module I did was A World of Literature 2, Empires and Aftermaths, and this built on A World of Literature 1, um, but rather than look at classics, was kind of looking at modern empire literature. So the first thing we read was Afro Ben's Orinuku and Other Writings, and I really enjoyed this when I read it. I found it really interesting. I hadn't really ever read anything about colonialism, and I found that really interesting, so I'll give that a solid four. Then we read Equiano's The Interesting Narrative and Other Writings, and we kind of read that at the same time as Orinoco. I'm going to go with four because I think I wrote about them together and I both found them quite interesting, but it wasn't something that I ultimately ended up being particularly passionate about. Then we read Stevenson's Treasure Island and the Ebb Tide. It's a classic. It's really interesting. It's a kind of fun adventure story. It was really good to read the classic. Um, I'd give that a three stars. Then we read Mo Yan's Red Sorghum, and this is work in translation set in China. Um, and I absolutely loved this. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a five stars, my first five star rating of this video. I think it developed in me a real love for um, translated literature from 
Asia, specifically China and Japan. So the next thing I read was Ihimera's The Whale Rider. I'm gonna go with a solid two stars. I didn't particularly enjoy that. And then we read Adichie's Americana and I loved this book. I found it absolutely fascinating. I think the writing absolutely captivated me. So I'm going to go with a solid five stars for that one as well. So our next module is Approaches to Literature 1, Writing Modernity. And these are all kind of modern texts, meaning from the 18th century onwards. And I didn't particularly like this module. I think it developed in me a hatred for 18th century literature. So we read Roxana, The Fortunate Mistress by Daniel Defoe gonna go with two stars that was bearable then we read Frankenstein uh, by Mary Shelley I actually really enjoyed this I'm gonna go with three or four stars for that one Tennyson's In Memoriam two stars I think it doesn't stand out to me so I'm struggling to remember. Um, then we read Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. I was fine reading it, but then I had to write an essay on it and I just ended up hating the book by the time I'd finished writing the essay. So two stars. So then we did Approaches to Literature 2 and this was called Other Worlds. And this was about medieval and early modern literature. So this was my first experience with medieval literature and I really enjoyed quite a few of the texts that we studied. So first of all, Beowulf, a verse translation. We read the Seamus Heaney translation, five stars. I think this was absolutely captivating read and really was the moment that I began to be interested in medieval literature. We then read Sir Gawain and the Green Knight and I was much less interested in this. I'm gonna give it three stars. We then read Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. Gonna go with two stars. I didn't hate it as much as the next book, Paradise Lost by John Milton, which I despise. We then read Shakespeare's The Tempest, which I had studied before and it was like fine. I mentioned I didn't really like Shakespeare, but The Tempest is one of my favorites, I think, because I've seen it a few times and I really like the actual story. So I'm gonna go with a solid three stars for that. Then we did a myth module. We had to read a couple of different things for this myth module. So we read some of Ovid's Metamorphoses, we read some of Plato's Republic. We didn't really read anything in totality. We read a little bit of Dante, already mentioned, not a fan of Dante. And then we read a little bit more Ovid, Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen. We also read a couple of books about Helen of Troy, which were all kind of modern adaptations of the story. And we read Lucretius's On the Nature of Things, which is the text I found most interesting from this module. And I feel like I could probably rate that a solid three stars, whereas the other texts probably couldn't really rate. I then did another module called The Big Book. We studied one big book, Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. I am not a Dickens fan particularly. I keep saying that. I just keep like decimating these famous authors. It's fine, whatever. I'm not a big Dickens fan. I didn't particularly enjoy studying Our Mutual Friend, um, but we did read it slowly, so it was kind of like bearable and enjoyable relatively. So I'm gonna rate that a solid, let's say three stars. Then in my second year, I did an Anglo-Saxon module called Conquest, Conversion and Assimilation. This was a good module. This is the module where I was like, medieval literature is the thing I like. I'm gonna keep taking modules in it, gonna keep learning and then I did my dissertation in it and now I'm here doing my masters. We were studying Old English as a language alongside literature so I'm not going to mention any of the non-fiction books we read. We did read excerpts from Old and Middle English and Anthology circa 890 to 1450 which is an excellent book if you're interested in reading little bits of Old English literature and kind of diving into what Old English literature is. Five stars, super useful. We then read Keynes and Lappage's translation of Asser's Life of King Alfred and other contemporary sources, which I'm not sure counts as fiction, but it was a key text for the module, so I'm gonna mention it. Five stars, really interesting. Asser's Life of King Alfred is a history written by a man named Asser all about King Alfred. Then we read the Beowulf manuscript, and again, I already kind of rated that, but we read a different translation. We read Falk's translation this time. We were kind of looking for different things in it. I really liked the Heaney translation, but I think the Falk was a little bit better for me. And I think I rated the other one five, so this is gonna be five too. Our next module is one called Inventing Britain, which is all about literature from the 18th to the early 19th century. And I'm gonna tell you now, not one of these books is gonna be rated highly. So the first thing we read was Selections from the Tatler and the Spectator, which were kind of gossip magazines from the 18th century. I actually found these interesting, but 
2. Then we read Ignatius's Letters 2. Then we read Phantom Mima by Eliza Haywood. This wasn't too bad. 3. Susanna Sandivre's A Bold Stroke for a Wife. Two. Then we read some 18th century landscape poetry, which was just as thrilling as it sounds. One. Then we read The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker. Three. That was fine. After that, we read some more poetry, all about African colonies and the British slave trade. If you're interested in that, I'm happy to send you the reading list. It was not for me. Two stars. Maria Edgeworth's Castle Recurrent and Ennui. One star. Then we read some romantic poetry. No zero. And that was the end of that module, and I was glad for it. If you're wondering how I did on that essay, moving on. The next module was The Shock of the New. This was another medieval literature module, so my mood is perking up. This is a lot more fun. However, it was a medieval period, um, which I hadn't really studied before. It wasn't Anglo-Saxon. It was kind of high to late medieval. Um, so there were aspects that I really enjoyed, but also texts which weren't my favorites. So the very first kind of topic was William the Conqueror. And we read um, a translation of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, a medieval history spanning literally 300 years from the medieval time. Absolutely fascinating. Then we read The Deeds of Hereward alongside the Chronicle, a solid four. And then we read The Layers of Marie de France. This isn't really the period of medieval history literature that I study currently, but solid four stars. I was absolutely captivated by this woman. We then read some kind of architectural stuff on medieval York before we moved on to The Life of Christina of Markgate and I loved this book. This was just as fascinating, if not more so, than Marie de France, and I really enjoyed studying this woman. We then read Gerald of Wales's History and Topography of Ireland, and this is another medieval kind of geographical text, and it was really interesting to read it. I think I ended up writing an essay on this one, um, although I didn't really enjoy it as much as the other ones. It was a really interesting manuscript and text to study. I would rate that three or four stars. Then we read The Book of Marjorie Kemp, which I found absolutely hilarious and really enjoyed. If you're looking for really accessible, funny, interesting medieval literature, read The Book of Marjorie Kemp. I'd rate it five stars. We then read The Parliament of Fowls, Chaucer, so straight back down there, gonna give that a one star, did not enjoy it. Now we read the York Mystery Plays. I'm not particularly interested in the York Mystery Plays. Gonna give it a two, it's not as bad as Chaucer. So then did a completely different module called The Victorians, and I was shocked by how much I actually enjoyed this. So the first book we read was Oliver Twist. So I'm gonna rate that a solid three stars. I quite like the Oliver Twist story, and I really like the kind of creepy, eerie darkness of the novel itself. We then read a whole selection of things from the Norton Anthology of English Literature, The Victorian Age. So we read kind of parts of essays, short stories. So I'm going to rate that a two. We then read Villette by Charlotte Bronte. Didn't hate this, didn't love it. I'm going to give it a three. Kipling's Kim, which I didn't particularly enjoy. So I'm going to rate two stars. Mrs. Warren's Profession by George Bernard Shaw. And this was my personal least favorite text from the entire module. So I'm going to rate that a solid one star. Then moving on to my third year, I did a module called British Science Fiction and Fantasy and this was a good module, let me tell you. We got to study all kinds of incredible science fiction and fantasy literature and it has, first of all, fueled my interest in that area in my personal reading life and secondly, kind of transformed the way that I think about it as literature, as literary works and kind of analyse it for devices and techniques, themes and ideas. We read H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, five stars, Nesbitt the story of the amulet. I didn't love this one so much, three stars. We read The Island of Dr. Moreau, fascinating. You should definitely read that, five stars. We read The War of the Worlds. I really enjoyed this science fiction story, so four stars. And we read Peter Pan, two stars, don't really care for it. We read Angela Carter's The Magic Toy Shop, four stars, really fascinating story. I still think about her writing and I would definitely study more of her. Then we read The Machine Stops, I love this story, five stars. And then we read The Wind in the Willows, three stars. Then we read The Silver Chair, absolutely loved that, five stars. And we read Jill Murphy's The Worst Witch, two stars, honestly. This is a children's book and I don't remember particularly enjoying it. We read Chalky by John Wyndham, oh, that's a good book, five stars. And we read 
some short stories. Then we read Howl's Moving Castle. So the next module I did was from Tennyson to Tolkien, the Middle Ages and modern literature. This was an absolutely insane module. Insane in all the right ways, let me clarify first of all. It basically taught you how to be a medievalist, how to use the medieval in literature and how to analyse how modern literature uses the medieval. So the first thing we read was Tennyson's Idylls of the King. This was kind of a foundation text, really interesting to read and get into. Four stars. Then we read John Ruskin's The Nature of Gothic. I've read this multiple times since then, um, so my rating is slightly skewed. Three stars. William Morris's News from Nowhere. It was a good experience to have read it. We then read The Story of the Glittering Plain by William Morris again. I liked this slightly more than News from Nowhere, so I'm going to go with four stars. Then we read Nesbitt's Fairy Tales. I found these so interesting. I'm going to go with four stars. Kipling's Puck of Pook's Hill. I didn't particularly enjoy this. I don't think I like Kipling very much. Um, so two stars. Tolkien's The Fool of Gondolin. I really enjoyed studying this. We're talking a second about Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings. Um, but yeah, Fool of Gondolin, four stars. Then we read some First World War poetry. I think we read Siegfried Sassoon, uh, David Jones, and maybe a couple of other people too. Then we read The Cottingly Fairies, three stars. Then we read The Holy Grail, two stars. The Hobbit, five stars. Then our final module. This was called Pulp Fictions of Medieval England, romance and popular fiction and I hated this module. I will tell you all of the medieval romances that we read. I'm sure that a different person would have loved it. That's not the point of this video, what other people like. The point is what I liked and I hated this. So we read Sir Galtha, we read MRA, we read A Squire of Low Degree, we read Octavian Imperator, we read Le Bon Florence of Rome, we read The Wedding of Sir Gawain and Dame Ragnall, we then read The King of Tars. So those are all of those medieval romances. I would rate all of them two stars, except for the Dame Ragnall, which was probably my favourite. We then read some trashy romance novels and kind of compared them. Jackie Ashenden's The Debt, Jessica Gilmore's Cinderella's or Secret Royal Fling, Annie West's The Sheik's Royal Baby Revelation. I have to say the concept for this um, module is incredible. And if this is the period that you're into, I'm sure it would have been a fantastic module. And then the last book I read for my undergraduate degree was The Lord of the Rings, all three books. I read The Silmarillion, I read The Hobbit. This is Isabel who is currently editing her video, popping in to add a couple of books that I completely forgot about when I was filming this. And that is the medieval component of my dissertation. So I read all of Tolkien's works and then I read a medieval dream poem called Pearl and I read Parliament of Fowls, which has already been on my list. And I read uh, Macrobius's dream theory work um, on the dream of Scipio. I'm not sure why I forgot to mention them before, they were a very key component to my dissertation, but here we are. So those are all of the books I read for my undergraduate degree. It's possible that I have missed some out, not gonna say I haven't. I hope you found it really interesting and maybe it's even taught you a little bit about kind of what an English literature undergraduate degree might look like. You might have noticed that as I went through the course, I literally specialized. So I kind of saw one kind of topic or area of English literature that I really liked and I ran with it and I kept picking modules um, that were really specific to my interests. You get a huge choice of modules at the University of York and I think this is one of the strengths of their English department. You really get to make the degree your own and I made it my own by kind of specialising in medieval literature, uh, medievalism and that kind of led me to where I am now. Um, but I know just as easily people who specialised in Victorian literature or modern literature or whatever and have kind of gone on their own path and followed that interest further. So yeah, I hope this has given you an impression of how many books an English literature student has to read. Um, of course this was over three years and of course this doesn't take into account secondary criticism and literary theory, but it is still absolutely fascinating to see how many that is. I'm going to put the number on screen right now because I didn't count before this video. Thanks again for watching until the end. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more. And of course, if you would like to know anything else about studying English at the University of York or studying English in general, leave your questions and comments down below because I would love to answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.